And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Now you've all recognized it, right? This, of course, is the famous ironic blessing. Ironic because it's Aaron, not ironic, which the ironic blessing is something different entirely. Here's the ironic blessing. As you slide down the banister of life, may the splinters never point the wrong way. And so, so we have Moses, and his brother is the high priest, and he speaks to his brother Aaron, and he says, here's how, what I want you to do. I want you to speak to the children of Israel. Here's how I want you to bless them. And then he pronounces this famous Aaronic blessing that you've heard if you have spent any time in a synagogue or any time in Israel or any time with some Jewish friends. This is the blessing. But it's also our blessing as well. When you're the children of God, he will put his name upon you and he will bless you. And it, it's interesting, it's unique in this because it keeps on mentioning the Lord. It says, the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you. And what was that about? The repetitiveness of his name to, is because it, it's all about him. It's not about us. But there's something even more important than that that is quite distinctive. Because when you look at the gods, the pagan gods, which there are many, 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 you know what the, the, the pagan believers do? They have to get their god's attention. They're busy trying to get his attention, trying to somehow attract him or somehow appease him because they're these angry and distant gods. And in this case, it's our god who's trying to get our attention. That's what he's doing. He's trying to get our attention. He's being proactive here. He's wanting to bless you, and he's wanting to come to you. And it's like the song we sang today. His goodness is running after you. That's the difference between our God and all these other small g gods in the world. And you will remember when Elijah was out up on Mount Carmel. Do you remember this? And he was with the prophets of Baal, and he had this little contest going on to see whose God would answer by fire. So he let the prophets of Baal go first. Do you remember what they did? It says they cried out all day long and cut themselves with rocks trying to get their God's attention. And then Elijah, Elijah was a kind of a piece of work, you know. He, you know, he's a bit of a sly dog. And so he starts mocking them. He says, oh, maybe your God's gone on a trip. Or he says, or maybe he's busy. Do you want to know what the literal translation of maybe he's busy is? Do you want to know? Most people don't know. It literally means maybe he's sitting on the can. Your God's busy because he's sitting on the can. <laughs> I mean, what's he doing? He's mocking these guys. And then he says one prayer, and the fire comes down from heaven and consumes the altar. And see, the difference is, is that we serve this God who wants to reach out to us long before we want to reach out to him.